Hi guys, uh, welcome to this lesson. Uh, this is text and test six, chapter three point one zero. Um, our topic is applications of De Moivre's theorem. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to jump straight into questions today, um, just to show you the first application, which is using. De Moivre to generate uh, trigonometric identities. So uh, we'll do a whole chapter on these uh, later on, probably in sixth year. But just to show you, um, question two asks you to uh, use De Moivre's theorem, express sine two theta in terms of sine theta and cos theta. So um, let's have a look at how you do that. Well, to get sine two theta um, using De Moivre, you'd say something like this, cos theta plus I sine theta, squared is the same as cos 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta. That's what De Moivre says. Um, so if we square out this left hand side here, we get cos theta plus i sine theta times cos theta plus i sine theta. Uh, well, cos by cos is cos squared theta, cos theta plus i sine theta plus i sine theta cos theta um, i sine theta by i sine i cos sine theta by cos theta is the same thing again and then i sine theta by i sine theta is um, i squared sine squared theta um, what we get here is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta Okay, that's the real part, plus i times uh, twice sine theta cos theta. Okay, so that's what's equal to cos 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta. And if you remember, with a complex number, if two numbers are equal to each other, the real parts have to be the same as the real parts. So we get cos of 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. You'll find that formula in the log tables. And that's a legitimate proof that you can use for it if you want to. Um, and we also get that sine of 2 theta, which is what they're looking for in this question, is twice sine theta cos theta. Okay, so there's your answer to 2 part 1. Uh, question 5 <coughs> um, asks to find the values of z for which z cubed equals minus 8, giving your answer in rectangular or Cartesian form. Um, okay, so this is a really common type of question, and it's one you need to be able to do. It depends on uh, being able to use a thing called uh, the general polar form. So uh, z cubed is minus 8. Well, if I want to put that into general polar form, what I would say is minus 8 back here. Its distance from the origin is obviously 8. So in polar form, that's going to be 8. And then you're going to say cos of the argument here is 180. Um, plus i sine. 180. Now I've left a gap there. Uh, the reason for that is that argument is 180 or if you were to say uh, 180 plus 360 could be 540. Okay, because then you go around to here. That's 540. You still land, you still rotated from your plus 8 here distance. You've still gone around and landed where you want to land. Um, or at 360 that you could say it's 900. Because 900 degrees means you've gone once, twice, plus another 180 and you've landed where you want to land. Or it could be 1260, that means one more rotation. In fact it could be any multiple of 360 could be the argument. As long as you add 180 onto it. So that's what we say. It's 360 n, where n 
is one of the natural numbers. N is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, this is general polar form, and it's really important that you know how to use it. Uh, any question that asks you to find roots, which is what we're about to do, we're about to find the cubed root of minus 8, and there's three of them, so we're going to find the three cubed roots of minus 8, uh, needs you to work in general polar form. Okay, because what we've been asked to do now is to solve this problem, z cubed is 8 cos 180 plus 360n plus i sine 180 plus 360n. Uh, well, taking cubed roots on both sides, that's the same as z equals 8 to the power of a third. That's a cubed root. Okay, a cubed root of x is the same as x to the power of one third. Uh, the fifth root of x, for example, is the same as x to the power of one fifth. The nineteenth root of x is the same as x to the power of one nineteenth. Okay, so just that's the notation. So that's the cubed root of eight times uh, cos one eighty plus three sixty n plus i sine one eighty plus three sixty n to the power of one third. Okay, so that's taking cubed roots on both sides. Um, and what does that give us for z? Well, it gives us eight to the power of one third is two. De Moivre now says multiply by the, argu the arguments by one third. <coughs> so that's gonna become cos of, well, a third of 180 is 60 plus 120n plus i sine third of 180 is 60 again a third of 360 is 120 yeah. okay so there's our expression for z i'm going to move on to the next page here. i'll leave that down there but this is question five continued <coughs> we've got that z is going to be twice cos of 60 plus 120n plus i sine 60 plus 120n uh, okay well when n is remember any integer so let's start off with when n is 0 uh, our first root z1 is twice cos of 60 plus i sine of 60 Okay, so go to your calculator, sine 60, well, cos 60 is a half, uh, plus i sine 60 is uh, root 3 over 2. And we get ourselves 2 times a half is 1, plus 2 times root 3 over 2 is root 3. i. So there's one of our roots, cubed roots of 8. Um, another one is when n equals 1. Excuse me. So our second root becomes two times uh, cos of 60 plus 120 plus i sine. Well, 60 plus 120 is 180. Uh, so that's going to be two times cos of 180 is minus 1 um, plus sine of 180 is 0. So that's going to be minus 2. Um, and our third one then, when n equals uh, 2, our third root will be twice cos 60 plus 120 times 2 is 240. Plus i sine, same thing, which is 300 altogether. Uh, so that's going to give us twice, uh, excuse me, twice uh, the cos of 300, which is 0 0.5, plus i times the sine of 300 
is minus root 3 over 2, I think. Yeah, that's root 3 over 2. So minus um, root 3 over 2. Multiply that by 2 and you get yourself 1 minus root 3 i. Um, so those are our three roots. Now, the reason I can stop here, um, and you can if you know that a cube, so this was a cubic problem, so you're going to have three separate answers. Um, you can carry on if you want, if you do for n equals 3. What you're going to find you get is uh, this first answer again, 1 plus root 3i. For n equals 4, you'll get this answer, n equals 5. That you'll just repeat the answers over and over. So let's have a look at that one. What's that going to be? It's going to be twice cos 60 plus uh, 120 times 3 is 360. So we're back to where we started in terms of a rotation. Plus i sine 60 plus 360. Uh, sorry, that's going to be uh, 420. So uh, that's twice the cost of 420 is 0 0.5, same as up here, cost of 60. And the sine of 420 is root 3 over 2, same as sine of 60. Okay, so we get 1 plus root 3i, which is no good. Well, it's fine, but it's not the one we were looking for, okay? So our three answers, if z cubed is minus 8, then z1 might be 1 plus root 3i. Uh, minus 8 is a real number, so uh, the other, the complex conjugate has to be a root as well. That's z3, 1 minus root 3i. And finally, z2 is minus 2. So minus 2 by minus 2 by minus 2 will give you minus 8. Same is true if you multiply that by itself three times. You get minus 8, and same thing here. So these are the three cube roots of minus 8. Um, now, that's question 5. And lastly, we're going to look at question 9, part 2. Um, like I said, these types of questions, you do need to be able to do them. They do come up in the leading set. Question 9, part 2. Solve z squared equals this. So they're asking you to find the square root of this number. Okay, find z. And there's going to be two values for z because that's a quadratic. z squared equals something. So z squared equals uh, 2 minus 2 root 3 i. Well, that's no good to us because it's currently in uh, Cartesian form. 2 minus 2 root 3 i is down here somewhere. Okay, the modulus of that number is 2 squared plus 2 root 3 squared. That's going to be 4 plus 12. Okay, so the modulus is going to be 4. The argument, uh, well, first of all, we need to know what this reference angle is. Reference is going to be the tan inverse of uh, 2 root 3 is your opposite over 2. So tan inverse of root 3, uh, 2 is cancelled there. And the inverse tan of root 3 is 60 degrees. Okay, so this, the argument is 360 minus 60 degrees is, uh, there's your tan inverse, uh, 2 root 3 over 2, uh, is 300 degrees. So, uh, this number, z squared, in polar form is going to be 4 cos 300 plus i sine 300. Um, and what we want is z. So z is going to be 4 to the power of a half. Okay, bring that over. You're taking square roots on both sides. Cos 300 plus i. Oh, no, I've left a mistake uh, there, so I'm just going to... 
rectified in the next line. I sign 300. Very common mistake. <coughs> I forgot to use general polar form, which is where you say 300 plus 360N. Um, and that's all to the power of a half in this line. Okay, so I should have had a plus. Uh, well, 4 to the power of a half is 2, and then De Moivre's theorem says multiply through by a half cos of 150 plus 180n plus I sine 150 plus 180n. Um, so we want two solutions here because it's a quadratic z squared. So we will say uh, the first solution is when n equals 1 or n equals 0. It doesn't really matter. Well, n equals 0. Um, you pick this number, by the way. You pick whatever number. If you want to start with n equals 17, start with it. And then go 17, 18, 19, uh, 20. <coughs> what matters is the whole numbers are consecutive. It doesn't matter which ones you pick. Z1 is going to be 2 cos 150 plus 0. So it's cos 150 plus I sine 150 plus 0. Um, and that's 2 cos 150. Uh, I think it's minus root 3 over 2. Yeah, minus root 3 over 2. Uh, You'll notice root 3 over 2 is coming up a lot. They like to stick with the same angles here. It makes work a little bit tidier. Plus I sine of 150, I believe, is 1 half. 0 0.5. Okay, if you multiply all that by 2, you get yourself minus root 3 plus I. There's one possible root, and the other possible root z2 is when n is 1 twice cos 150 plus 180 times 1. Okay, 180 times 1, which is uh, plus i sine 150 plus 180 is 330, is what we're going to get there. Um, well, that's going to be twice uh, cos of 330 root 3 over 2 plus i times sine of 330 minus a half and that's going to be root 3 minus i when you multiply through by 2 so z1, our first root, is minus root 3 plus i, um, and z2 is uh, root 3 minus i. The two square roots of this number up here. Um, okay, for classwork, tomorrow we're going to be looking at page 130, questions 1, 2 part 2, 4, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, I'll see you then. Thank you.